Hi, this is Rahul, uh, Senior Product Manager at Mubi. Uh, today I'll uh, be taking you through our CMS. It'll be a detailed uh, description and demo of uh, the features available and uh, you know how to get about configuring things uh, when you've started a free trial or maybe purchase a subscription for Mubi. So today uh, we'll be covering uh, you know basics about the Mubi CMS, the dashboard, uh, different sections that we have. So I'll quickly take you uh, through the uh, CMS. So this is uh, the basic CMS that you get after you've logged in. Uh, you can see various sections here. The first is just to get you started. You then have information about your hosting and CDN. Uh, you have some analytics uh, you know, related to the videos that you have on your platform. Uh, your website performance, uh, you know, Google Analytics, uh, you know, tracking of visits uh, by different regions in the world. Uh, to get this started, you'll have to configure your Google Analytics code. Uh, you can set up an account with Google Analytics and then enter the information here. Then you see some information related to your uh, revenue and total number of users. And on the top, uh, you have an option to preview your website. Uh, you can change language if you select, uh, you know, if you choose to have different languages on the store. And then uh, you have options to log out from here. And uh, there's the basic left menu using which you can access uh, different features that are available on the movie platform and CMS. Moving on to content, uh, I'll be taking you through uh, the content management options that you get from uh, the movie CMS. So they're like, uh, you can create categories for content, you can create new formats, you can define poster sizes, uh, you can enable live streaming and other content related options. You can upload a video audio file. Uh, you can add a new content. You can map a video to a content. So encoding starts. You can add live streams. Uh, you can set a go live date uh, for the content that you're adding. And then you can also upload subtitles. So we'll go through all these features uh, and it'll take you to the CMS. So once you go into manage content, you have uh, different options like the content library, video library, uh, the manage metadata section and settings. So first uh, we'll go into settings. Uh, this is the page where uh, you, know, you can enable uh, different options that are available on the platform. Uh, you can choose video on demand, video live streaming, audio on demand. If you want single part and multi-part of content, uh, single part is basically used for movies, uh, short videos, things like that and multi-part is uh, mostly oriented at TV shows, series, something like that. So for multi-part content, you even have uh, different settings like uh, which episodes you'd like to show, like you want, uh, do you want them in ascending or descending order? You can also enable policy engine, which is already enabled on the store. Uh, you can allow content downloads and then set different banner sizes for different types of uh, posters that you have. So moving on uh, to the manage metadata section, there you have options to create new categories and then manage categories. So on the store, I have uh, these categories set up. So if you wanna add a new category, you need to add the add content category section. So content category is basically categorizing all your content into a particular group. Like if you say movies, I can have all content that are uh, movies in this category and then they're shown on one page. So next moving on to content formats. So this is basically a format of metadata that you have on your store. So if you take into consideration movies, so I can uh, create it. Uh, I can create a new content format or I can go and edit it. So if I edit movies, I'll be able to see all the metadata fields that are available on this. So you can see I have content name, release record date, story, genre, and all these other fields. So if you wanna add a new field, you go into add metadata field. So once that's done, you'll have a new field here, and then you can use the add button to add it to your content format. So if you wanna have a different poster size for different content formats, so you go ahead and set it here. So you can have uh, two types of content formats for single uh, part content, like say short movies and uh, documentaries and then full on movies. So for movies, you may want to have a vertical poster and then for the short videos, you can have a horizontal poster. 
So you set uh, the required dimensions that you want over here. So once that's done, uh, let's move on to the video library. So this is where uh, you upload all your video files. So there are multiple options, uh, you know, to upload the video files. Like the first is uh, from the CMS, like using a web browser. So you can click on upload video, select from Kavira, and then select file, and then upload it. Uh, the other options that we have is basically an FTP. So you get a credentials for the FTP and you upload all your files here. So you don't need to manually, uh, you know, upload videos one by one, you can do it all at once. And then uh, you have an option if you have an Amazon S3, you can use that to sync videos to your video for, uh, library as well. So you see, I already have a lot of videos on this store. So the next thing is adding a subtitle. So if you want to add a subtitle, you use the add subtitle option here. In this, you can use uh, as many subtitles as you want. It can be in any language. You need to upload the files from here. And then if you want to change uh, the display language for a subtitle, you can use the display name feature to change it. So moving on to the content library, which is the primary thing in manage content. So this is a list of all the content that you have on your store. Uh, if you want to add a new content, you use the add content option here. Or if you want to upload uh, multiple content at the same time, like create multiple content, you can use the import option and then use an Excel sheet to have all the content information there and then just upload it to create all the content. There are many other options here, like you can set the geo block for a content, which countries this content is visible in. You can manage related content to this particular content, like you can have maybe Transformers 1 as the primary content and then Transformers 2, 3, 4 related to it. Uh, you can edit an existing content from here. You can set pay-per-view from here as well. And uh, if you want to search or filter for a particular content, you can do it from here. Uh, you can also filter by the content format that you want to view and then sort it by last uploads and then content type as well. So that's all uh, for content management. Uh, moving on, uh, we have uh, the website. So once you register with movie, like start a free trial, uh, you have a website instantly up and running. So if you want to configure your website, uh, you'll be able to set a template. Uh, we have multiple templates. And then you can pick a banner and then uh, you know upload images for the banner. You can define the menus. You can have a featured section on the home page. Uh, you can create static pages. You can manage the pages that you want in the footer. And then in the end, when you want to go live, you can set the domain name. Uh, so in the CMS, that's under the move website menu. So you go into templates and then manage template. So there you'll be able to see the different templates that we have. Uh, one is the modern, which is there on the store right now. So if you click on edit template, you'll be able to edit uh, the source code for the pages. If you want to use your own design, which is uh, BYOD, like bring your own design. Uh, you can even download the source files and then uh, you know keep it as a backup and then upload it in one go. The other templates that we have are the physical only, classic, traditional Revo. Uh, the Revo is uh, actually our latest template which supports a visual designer. So we'll uh, have a separate video for that. Uh, you can refer for the visual designer feature. So in the website, uh, the next thing is homepage. Uh, like if you want to set up your homepage, you'll be able to define uh, the website logo, uh, like a store logo and a fab icon. Uh, you can pick a banner style. Uh, right now we have three banner styles. And you can, you'll can you be able to see a preview within the CMS as well. Uh, you can define the size of the banner that you want and uh, the scroll duration, like the duration in which you want the images to change. Uh, you can define additional things like, uh, and, you know, the text on the banner, a button maybe, and then the URL where the button redirects to. Then you can add uh, featured sections, like if you want to have latest uploads or something like that on your homepage, you can go ahead and add feature sections. So there are two uh, types of sections that we have right now. First is manually generated, where you need to add content one by one. And the other one is an auto-generated section, 
where uh, you know you can define a particular category and uh, the criteria for that category like you can say i want most viewed content in popular and then all single part content and then save it so this section will automatically update each and every time an end user opens the site you can then uh, create a menu for your website if you go in here there are various categories that you can add so you can have you can choose to have different content categories on your menu static pages apps and external links so if you add an external link basically what happens is if an end user clicks on that menu item uh, he or she will be automatically redirected to this URL and then once you've set up uh, the menu items that you want you can even drag and uh, change the orientation or location that you want the uh, menu to appear so if you choose to have a multi-level menu you'll be able to have the multi-level menu on the front end as well so if we just go into the website So as I said, uh, once the website menu loads, you can see that I have a multi-level menu on the website. Then we're going to static pages. So static pages is uh, basically new pages that you wanna, uh, wanna add on your website. So you can add a page for say, how to use my platform or something similar or any, any particular page that you wanna add. You can click on add new page and then set up all the items uh, you know in html or maybe plain text so we have an editor for that as well and the links on the right are uh, basically social media links so if you want to have these links on your website footer you'll need to add a link here the domain name is probably uh, the last thing that you'll need to set up on your website. Like if you want to have, uh, if you want to go live with your website and you have a domain already, so you can add a new domain, pick a default language for this domain. And you can also add uh, coming soon pages with a passcode or maybe for email collection. Uh, one thing to note is before you, uh, you know, want to go live, you'll need to point your domain to this server IP, which is 52.0.232.150. This is our server. So once your domain is pointed to this server, you'll be able to go live. That's all uh, for the website menu. Uh, moving on. Uh, for the mobile apps, you have similar options. You can preview templates, you can add a banner, you can uh, add a menu. Uh, you'll be able to add featured sections and then publish an app to the App Store. So in the mobile menu, as you see, we have uh, different menus for different apps and different platforms that we support like Android, iOS, Roku. So once you've uh, seen all the templates here and then uh, you know, set up your homepage, you'll be able to publish the app. Uh, it'll take us around uh, one business day to build the app. So once you've set up homepage uh, in a similar manner to the website, like for banners and then featured sections, and you also have a sync with website option. So if you wanna sync uh, your banner and uh, the featured sections to the website, you can use this. And then once this is all set up, you can use uh, the publish to store option where you fill up all your details and then upload your flash screen. So once uh, you've done this, you'll be able to get an app from us and then uh, you, know, you can use either your own developer ID or we can use ours to upload uh, the app to the app store. Uh, next, let's uh, talk about the playout feature. So playout is actually a feature where uh, you can set up your own linear channel using uh, videos, VOD content that is there on the store. So once you go into playout, you'll see an option to add a new channel and then you can schedule different videos at different periods of time. Next up, we have MovieCart, which is basically a physical store. So you can sell physical goods uh, like products on a platform as well. 
So you can even define uh, shipping rules and then uh, view all the orders that your end users have placed. So if you go into movie cart, you'll see an option called settings. These are uh, basic few things that you want to set up here. Like, uh, you know, if you want product variants or you want to geo block uh, certain content and then enable a free offer on checkout. Uh, if you want to create shipping tables, you need to go into shipping. Uh, you need to define a default shipping price and then different shipping methods and product sizes that you support. And then you'll be able to add shipping cost by country. So if I go here, I'll be able to pick a country, uh, shipping method, the size of the product and the price as well. So once you've had uh, products on your store, if you want to have uh, orders and once people start placing them, you can go into movie cart orders to view all the orders that have been placed by your end users. For the player, you have uh, various options like uh, you can define a uh, watermark, you can have uh, the logo on your player, and uh, you'll also have an option to select the advanced player using which uh, you can actually design the page that uh, you know the player sits on so you'll be able to show content metadata and different related content on this page as well uh, moving on we have uh, user features which is basically social login resume watch favorites playlist device management uh, restrictions on watch duration autoplay offline viewing and casting and custom user profiles so with uh, you know the user features you can integrate your platform with either Facebook uh, or Google. So you can allow users to log in with uh, their existing accounts. Uh, you can then enable a lot of features that are available on a platform like resume watch. So if somebody is watching a video and then leaves in the middle, the next time he wants to watch the same video, it will actually start from where he left off. Uh, you can use add to favorites, a library of content that he's purchased, uh, his watch history, reminders to watch content, and then user generated content. So with user generated content, it's actually uh, very simple to make a platform similar to YouTube. So your end users will also be able to upload video that other people can watch on your store or website. In restrictions, you have uh, various options, which is the number of devices that somebody can use, which is mobile apps and TV apps. Uh, you can restrict the number of simultaneous streams that can happen, and then you can also set a daily duration that the end user is allowed to watch for free. Uh, in the mobile apps menu, you'll see options uh, you know, to enable Chromecast, like casting, and then offline being, if you wanna support that on the apps, and uh, manage user profile is actually a very powerful feature using which you can define what are the information that you want to collect from your end users while they register. So that's all about uh, the user features. Moving on, uh, we'll go to monetization, which is probably one of the major concerns that you have at this moment. So from the CMS, you can uh, set up a payment gateway, you can enable carrier billing, you can enable pay-per-view, subscription ads, bundles, coupons, vouchers, free content, and then set up your invoice as well. So in monetization, uh, first thing you need to go do is go into payment gateway, and then you need to add a new gateway. Uh, gateways allow you to collect payments from your end users. So once you've signed up with one of these gateways that we support out of the box, you'll be asked to enter the credentials for those gateways here. So you can start using all the features. Until unless uh, you integrate a gateway, uh, there's actually a test gateway enabled on the store by default. So any transactions that happen before this will actually be test transactions and won't actually earn you any money. So if you go into settings, you'll see different options for monetization that we have uh, already on the platform. You'll be able to enable and disable all these features like I have coupons, vouchers, bundles, and then pay-per-view and subscription enabled. So once you've enabled uh, the monetization of your choice, uh, you can also choose to enable carrier billing uh, where somebody is uh, you know, allowed to pay for 
uh, content that you want to purchase from their mobile phone. Uh, you can also set up restrictions like uh, if you require login or you know if somebody can watch free content without login and then geoblock options and create new categories and uh, moving on if you go into a particular uh, option like suppose a subscription uh, you'll be allowed to create new plans set up uh, the duration the subscription fee the content that is allowed in that plan and then set up a free trial as well uh, for PPV, you'll be able to create uh, new plans, the pricing for those plans, set up, uh, you know, all content plans, which is basically uh, one price which applies to all of your content. And then the similar way, you can also create coupons and vouchers that you can provide to your end users to purchase content. Uh, there's also an option to define free content. If you want to... Uh, provide some content on your store without any price, uh, the free of cost to every end user that's there. You can add all those content here and they'll be free to watch. Uh, the next option we have is actually policy engine. So policy engine allows you uh, to restrict uh, certain parameters related to a content once the end user has made a purchase. So to add or manage new rules on your platform like policies. You can go into manage rules. Uh, there you have various parameters that you can use. Uh, that is the access period, uh, the resolution that's uh, you know allowed to watch HD or ST, and you have the number of views that are allowed and the watch duration. So you can set up all these parameters and once you've done that, you'll be able to map this particular rule to a monetization model like suppose if I buy a content using PPV new uh, I'll be restricted uh, by say uh, the rule X or test rule uh, if I've defined a particular access period like say 10 days so after 10 days I won't be able to access that content and I'll need to purchase it again Next up, uh, we have uh, analytics. So you have a lot of analytics in the CMS already. So you can see revenue, uh, your users, the actions that have taken, uh, content views, bandwidth, and then movie cart orders. So to see all those uh, analytics, you need to go into the CMS and then analytics. So there you have revenue, users, user action, video, content partners, and then even an option to create custom reports. So once you've gone into analytics, you'll uh, see various uh, parameters related to your store. Uh, if you pick a particular date duration, you'll be able to see all the transactions that have happened here and uh, for different monetization models. So I don't have uh, monetization set up on this particular store, so I'm not able to find any values. So once you have uh, people buying content or subscribing on your platform, you'll be able to see uh, all those details here. So the other reports that we have is users, user action, video, and, and content partners. So in marketing, uh, the major thing that you'll be concerned about is uh, the email triggers and SEO. So if you want to set up uh, the email triggers, like, uh, you know, when somebody, uh, you know, signs up to your platform, like the register. So there's a confirmation email that uh, they'll receive. So that is uh, the welcome and registration. So you can define what is the content that you want to have in this email. And then there are specific variables that are, you are allowed to use, like uh, the studio name, the first name, which is the first name of the end user. So you can use those variables in this email as well as images, videos, links, anything that you want. And even you can define uh, you know, the email in HTML. The next thing is SEO. So if you want to use uh, your website, uh, you know, if you want to improve the SEO performance, so you can use these options to, you know, define, give descriptions or maybe titles and then modify them, uh, you know, in order to, to improve the performance. So you can set this up for every page uh, that you have on the website. Uh, the next thing that we have is uh, billing. So before we move to billing in marketing, you can also set up uh, custom, uh, custom codes for tracking. Like you already have an option for uh, Google Analytics. You can add Facebook pixel and uh, 
other uh, tracking codes using this new tracking code option. So you can pick a location where you want to add it in the source code and then just add the source code and update. So this does the job for you. And billing is all about uh, you know your payments to movie. Like you'll have certain payments related to your storage, bandwidth, the platform fee, uh, fee for a dedicated server, and you know you'll have to add your credit card, uh, add multiple cards, select a default card. So all those options you'll be able to find under billing. Uh, in support, you have basically help and user support and tickets. So if you have an issue or maybe a new feature request, you go into support and then all tickets. From here, you can add a support ticket uh, for our team. Uh, once you've added that, uh, somebody from our team will reply to you on that. So you can add new tickets from here. And then if you want to view your end users and then uh, you know send them password, reset emails, see... Um, you know, when they subscribe, when they log in. Uh, so you can use all those, uh, you can view all those information from here. In settings, basically you have email notifications, which is if somebody puts a contact us request on your website, uh, if somebody registers, if somebody buys a content, so you can add, you can get all those notifications and then you can manage it from settings. Uh, you also have an option to set up multiple languages and translations, and then you can add uh, secondary as admins as well. So if you go into settings, you see email notifications, which is basically a list of all the notifications that are generated from movie. So if you don't want to add, uh, you know, have any emails from uh, a service, so you need to disable the notifications. And then you can also set up different email accounts for different actions, like for contact us, you can forward all those to sales and uh, something like that. You can also set up uh, different admins on your store by going to manage permissions. So I have almost four admins on the store and then you can give specific permissions to different admins that you have on your store. In settings, you can also manage languages that you support. So I have quite almost five languages enabled on the store. I can add a new language from here and then translate uh, different text that we use on the store, like say register or click here. So all those texts uh, you can translate from here, pick a language and then translate it. You can also add uh, new keywords if you want to use them on your site or apps is in BYOD. Once you've added a new keyword, you can then proceed to translate it and then use it in the front end. Content partners is basically a feature that allows you to give access to your store to different users, but only to upload and view analytics for content. So if you have a partner who is providing you with videos or other content, you can also create a login for them and then they can log in to your site and then uh, they'll have a CMS which only has options for uploading video. And then if you want to add a content partner, you go into the content partner menu uh, once you've added their email and other information, they'll get an email notification asking them to, you know, create a password and then they'll be able to log in uh, to your website using uh, their login, which is partners.yourdomainname. So if I want to open up the partners uh, login here, I need to use partners.redopen.movie.com. So that will give them an access to, uh, you know, log into the CMS and then upload video content and other forms of content as well. So that was uh, all about the movie CMS. Uh, you can get more details on our online help, which is movie.com slash help. Uh, you also can log questions or discussions on our community, which is movie.com slash community. You can also request for a live demo. Uh, from our website. Uh, for any general questions, you can email us or maybe try our live chat. You can email us at support at the movie.com, sales at movie.com. Uh, that's all for today's video. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.